because there are seven days in the week and God says, I want you to circumcise him on the eighth day, which represents a new religious week. And that's why it is akin to baptism because it is like circumcision that when we go down, we come up anew. And then God says, after he has this son, he says, this is what I tell you, this is what we're going to do. Your son is going to be baptized, or if you will, circumcised on the eighth day. And I want you to know that I am going to make you the father of many nations, and your name shall no longer be Abram. Your new name is Abraham. Isn't it plausible that Job's original name was not Job? Maybe you need more than that. That was a guy named Jacob. Had a twin brother named Esau. If you remember the story explicitly, the Bible says that as his brother, who was scheduled to be born first, was on his way down the birth canal, his brother Jacob comes and grabs him by the heel and pulls him back in and then forces himself to come out first. Let me tell you something. You can be close to somebody who wants to be ahead of you. Don't you think that just because y'all close, they don't want to be first? And some people will pull you back in just to make sure they get out. That was for free. I didn't plan on saying that. He pulls him back in, and now he is a vagabond and a fugitive running for his life because Esau is trying to kill him. And the Bible says while he's running from his brother trying to preserve his life, he saw a ladder that stretched from earth to heaven. He has a dream. And while he's grappling with man, 20 years later we see him grappling with God. And the Bible says that the Lord comes and he begins to wrestle with Jacob, throws Jacob's hip out of socket. But Jacob says, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Let me tell you something. If God ever shows up, you better hold on to him until you get what you need. He's holding on to him and says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Somebody shout, Lord, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. And the Bible says that he says to Jacob, I will bless you as numerous as the dust of the earth and your name shall no longer be Jacob. Your new name is Israel. So it is plausible that Job's original name could have been something else. Come here, Simon. Bar Jonah. Simon, son of Jonah. Who do men say that I am? The other disciples say, some say thou art Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say you are one of the other prophets. He says, I don't care what they say. I'm not going to sit at the Last Supper with them. I am not going to spend three years of my life with them. I don't care what the outer so circle says. Is it possible that you care too much about your outer circle and what they think about you? He says, I'm not concerned with what they think about me. Who do you say that I, the Son of Man, Am. And nobody says anything but old knife carrying cussing Peter. I like cussing folk. Y'all not here with me today. I like people who will cuss every once in a while to let me know that there's some humanity in them. If you don't cuss, I'm scared of you. <laughs> so I say, Lord, I don't cuss. And I'm not saying you got to say them bad ones, but get almost to the edge. You know, say hell sometimes, just every once in a while to let me know that you'll pop off on a joke if he come at you wrong. I just need to know it's a little bit of hood in you. That's all I'm saying. And you don't got to say nothing. Just, just have that look that if somebody come at you wrong, be like, what? I done told him. I done told him. Simon! Who do you say I am? Thou art the Christ, Elizabeth, the son of the living God. Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but it was my father who was in heaven. And because 
you knew who I was when nobody else knew who I was? I'm changing your name from Simon Barjona to Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Hmm, that's interesting. No, he says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. There is a difference between two and of. If I give you the key to my house, I can lock all the doors in it and just let you in the front door, but you won't have any access. If I give you the keys of my house, you can get in my bedroom, my theater room, and my front door. Don't ever settle for the keys to somebody's heart. Oh God, help me in this cold church. Touch your name and say, if you ain't going to give me the keys of your heart, don't even ask me for my phone number. I don't want to have to find out if you love me or like me. I don't just want to be seen with you at nighttime. Can I have the keys of? The moral of the story is that God will not give you a new opportunity without also giving you a new reputation. And I'm getting ready to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. God is getting ready to bless you so much that you're going to stop answering to what they used to call you. Touch your neighbor and say, God's about to change your reputation. You did some stuff you had no business doing, went some places you had no place going, and they talked about you. But let me tell you, God's getting ready to cover all of that up. You're getting ready to walk into new seasons and new opportunities because God's getting ready to change your name. Touch somebody and say, my name's about to change. My name's about to change. My situation says broke, but my name is blessed. My situation says six, but my name is healed. My situation says single, but baby, God's about to send me my bow ass. Do I have anybody who will shout, God changed my situation? And I don't know who I'm talking to, but it might not have anything to do with anything, but I'm a connected. God told me to tell you this, by his stripes, You are all ready healed. You don't become healed when the doctor tells you they can't find it. You were healed when the doctor found it. Oh, I wish I had somebody. You were healed when the, scat, the CAT scan came back irregular. You were healed when you had a headache. You were healed when your blood pressure was high. God was just waiting on the sickness to catch up with his word. Somebody shout, it's already done. God's getting ready to change your name. But the first thing you must have, if you're going to qualify for the consideration, number one, good character. Job was an upright man, a perfect man, not perfect in the sense of not making a mistake because the Bible lets us know that Job is not without flaw. Job is a sinner, but he doesn't have moral malevolence. In other words, he know how to treat people. I want to talk about this because... A lot of people are good at their job, but just not good with dealing with people. In other words, Job said he was sorry when he did something wrong. Job was good inside. Job had a good moral compass. J Job knew how to treat people. He just wasn't a Sunday morning Christian. Oh, and we got too many folk on Sunday that don't cuss. We got a whole lot of folk on Sunday that know how to say hamana, hamana, shamana, I believe God. How in the world can you speak in a language you don't know but won't speak in a language you do know? 
How can you speak in tongues but don't know I'm sorry? Well, you can say amen or ouch, but holler at your boy. You got people shucking and bucking and running around the church and, and cussed the person they rode in the car with out all the way to church and then get in here and hallelujah, praise the Lord, sit down and shut up. Job was consistent. Everybody say consistent. All, all of God is looking for somebody consistent. Just touch your name and say, just be consistent. If you're going to be good, be good all the time. If you're going to be bad, be bad all the time. But I'm tired of you being good on Monday, and then I come thinking I'm getting something good, and you're no good on Tuesday. If you don't like me, don't like me every day. But don't like me sometime. Oh, God. I can deal with you not liking me every day. I just can't deal with thinking that we buried the hatch only to find out you buried it in my back. Job is good inside. Everybody shout, Lord, clean me inside. Psychologists did a study uh, on 10,000 adolescents in the 50s, in the 1950s, and asked all of them, uh, uh, how many of y'all think you're important? And out of the 10,000, 12% said that they felt like they were important. They asked the same question in 1986 to another 10,000 adolescents, and 80% of them said that they were important. And they discovered that our society is increasingly becoming narcissistic. That we are so self-focused that we can't see anything. I bet you, I bet you if I came out there right now and told you to let, let me see your phone and I was getting ready to take a picture, the camera would be facing in right now. Because we got an iPhone and all we do is take selfies. Oh, don't get quiet. I hear the Joy user saying, I don't use that, I got you, I got you, but we're talking about the direction of the camera and I hear, we're, we're, because everything is... Oh, oh, don't act like I be seeing y'all on Instagram positioning yourself because you know your angle. Y'all can't holler at your boy. Touch your name and say, I know my angle. How many times do you erase it before you post it? Oh, that ain't good. No, it's you. So if it ain't good, can't nobody do nothing about that. That's you. That's all you. I don't like that one. Well, you ain't got no option. That's all you got. <laughs> Slap somebody and say, I like me. I like me. I like me. But you better like you. You better like you because there's enough folk that don't. You better like you so that when they come up against you like a mighty Russian wind, you can already know that you are more than a conqueror. You better like you. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm not perfect, but I like me. I like me so much, I didn't recognize you didn't. I think they like me, boy, I think, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh, we in church, Hatashi. Job had good character. Somebody said, Lord, give me character. Job did something, and you want to write this down. Job worked on his eulogy, not his resume. <laughs> oh, that resume ain't really you. I went to Harvard, uh, the one in Houston. Because uh, we call Harvard. They ain't ever heard of you. See, do you know how people can lie on a resume? Talking about they got 20 years experience, but they 16 years old. Character. Character. Job had children, too. Bunch of them. Ten of them. We don't have babies like that no more. Grandmama and them had 12. 
How many children you want? One? Two, if the Lord say, 